Yeah, so hi, I'm Darren Reed. I'm Brett Sanders. Uh, we ran a sprint to create a new uh, type of course for the School of Humanities, um, a type of course that maybe has, isn't normally taught in a humanist school and taught in a way which we certainly don't normally teach. To be honest, we didn't necessarily know what to expect exactly. We had a couple of kind of um, precursor meetings to the actual sprint where we sort of ran through the ideas of what it was we were trying to achieve. But I think the, the hope or expectation from the sprint was that we would have um, a period of time and a space where we could just think about what it is we were trying to achieve and then actually create that product from um, the idea or the prototype that we came in with to start with. The really interesting thing about the sprint is it really gives you a period of time to really, really concentrate and work through your ideas. So you start with a concept, um, by the end of day two, that concept has been refined into something that's starting to approach an actionable solution, and by the end of the week, um, you really have a, a prototype basically ready to go. Because you've got that block of time, there's no excuse, there's no way There's no way to escape. You have to develop, you have to think through it, and also you have to look at your own ideas from multiple different angles because you're working with so many different people. Um, from a personal perspective, um, so we had one of the booths in the, the top of the library, top floor of the library, and just writing our ideas down on the glass and just having kind of stage one, stage two, stage three, all kind of disaggregated on Right, having been written down on the glass and then we could kind of add the substance of the course to that sort of skeletal structure. I think that was probably the most useful thing where we kind of turned an idea into something that was pictorial and visual and that we could then use kind of that visual imagination to try and actually create kind of a, the, the whole of the course from kind of this idea in our, in our minds to kind of the, the, the pictorial version of that on the screen. Yeah. What we do, or what we did in the sprint was layer our ideas. So the first thing you put on the wall are big, broad ideas, then you layer on top of them refinements, how those ideas interact, how you might actually be able to make them happen in the real world, then you layer more on top of that. And by the end of the process, like Brett was saying, you go from uh, sort of visually trying to realise what your ideas are at the start to actually having something you can work with at the end. But for me, the most important part of the process, I think, was the product testing phase, where we had uh, members of staff, we had students come in, we also had students who were just interested in what we were doing in the room, writing on the glass, who came in and tested our ideas. We had focus groups, and we were able to watch them anonymously in a different room via webcam, uh, see how people responded to those ideas, how people sold them, um, what the strengths, the weaknesses were of them, and then we could respond to them, because we still had time built into the sprint, to respond to how people responded to our, our mm. ideas and to refine them further and to say, right, now this is exactly what we need, what we want. I think actually sort of having one exercise kind of um, isn't... I think ha having one favourite exercise isn't actually that significant in, in that context because it's a relatively short space of time, so each day is so important towards achieving your final objective. So even though if day one was really important in kind of getting the ideas out there and then day four was kind of pr testing that prototype, I think they are so sort of closely interconnected and are so closely related to each other that they all kind of formed one really significant process that you couldn't really have one without the other in that sense. Excited. They should be excited about it because um, they're going to explore their ideas from perspectives they hadn't thought of before. And they should be nervous because other people won't get their ideas. Things that feel self-evident to you won't feel, won't be self-evident to other people in the room, won't be self-evident to people in your product testing groups. Mm. And that's great because it means you've got to explore your ideas from multiple perspectives. Some of them won't work, some of them will change. But ultimately, if you work through the process to take advantage of it, it will all work for the better. I think not to be precious about the initial idea they came up coming with. Um, so certainly we had this kind of far out idea about completely sort of reimagining the way in which we could deliver a humanities degree. And then slowly but surely over the course of the week, we had to sort of challenge our initial idea in, in the process, kind of sculpting of what the prototype was that we came out with. And I think a really important part of that journey was just not to be really precious about that initial idea, to be able to let go of having you know 
a certain type of assessment or a certain um, bunch of kind of learning outcomes or whatever it might be, it was really helpful just to kind of have this space just to put everything out there and then see what happened without being too worried about what the product ending up, ended up as from the, its starting point on the Monday. Well, it basically did it for us. You yeah. know, when it came to doing the paperwork, it was literally a case of times so of just cutting and pasting things we'd already generated. And really, it was stripping away from what we'd done. Mm. You know, I had to find the essence of what we'd already done. And I think that was go. actually sort of the most significant part from my perspective, because I didn't know anything about the sort of the administrative cycle, about how to, how to get the product into actually being a course via this kind of central process. So to come away either intentionally or accidentally with this documentation was really, really important because we could, as Darren just said, just copy and paste what we'd already sort of organically created and just transplant that into um, the kind of more formal documentation that we were um, having to produce for our um, managers. Good, uh, Good. yeah. Yeah, they were very supportive of us because they knew at the end of the day uh, they would get funding to buy our time. Um, the, and, and when we came back after that week, we'd come back with not only a completed course, but what they discovered is also a new way of brainstorming and putting our own ideas together. So when we're running our own projects now, um, it's, you know, it's probably fair to say we draw a lot of inspiration from that week, you know, how we construct things in a group, how we draw the most out from a team, how you get different people with different ideas about how things should be, how do you get them to work together. Um, we're making a film right now for a, you know, a small community up in Scotland, and there's five of us now working on this film, and we're essentially doing sort of little mini sprints every day where we get together, plot out ideas, and things just start naturally developing over time. And because we've done it before, we can direct that process mm. really quite easily. And I think also it helps your line managers, managers, whatever, actually understand what it is you're trying to do and how it fits into kind of the wider kind of school or faculty objectives. Um, so we whilst, again, like we had this idea, coming out of the other end of the sprint and having the product, you can then go and show that to your kind of line managers or whatever it might be, and they can then see what it is that you're trying to achieve. So it kind of helps from that perspective as well as trying to kind of explain an idea to them. It's much better to have kind of the product that they can put through their kind of system to then make this uh, course come into being. Well, first of all, if we define who we had in our sprint, um, so alongside kind of you as the facilitators, um, we brought in existing students, students from other courses, um, our peers, and also staff or lecturers from alternative subject groups um, so I think kind of having a really broad range of people in the sprint is really significant because I think the most important thing is to create a, a product and the paperwork that goes with it which explains what the course aims to achieve to people that won't necessarily have an affinity with what it means to study history or a humanities um, degree so from that perspective it's really helpful to have for example a journalist or a professor in uh, African politics, for example, and for them to be able to understand what it was we're doing and to get their feedback in how they could understand what it was that we were trying to achieve more clearly, that really provided probably the more useful feedback rather than simply our existing students or even our sort of directly or closely affiliated peers who knew, broadly speaking, what it is we were already doing. Yeah, again, like Brett says, variety. Um, students, staff, a broad range of staff, people who don't always agree or might you might not necessarily expect to agree with what you're doing because if you can communicate to them the value of what you're doing, um, if you can communicate to them why your approach is right, then you've already won the battle. I think the important thing that you understand is that they're there to help, they're there to foster your ideas. Um, you know, one week is a really intense period of time to spend with any group of people, but especially when you're taking one of your own ideas and they can be very, very precious and developing it into something much more practical, shall we say. Uh, you know, be prepared for uh, to, ch to be challenged and to challenge in return and embrace that opportunity because actually it's quite rare sometimes that you really get to kick the intellectual ball around with such intensity to, to realise 
something that maybe you're only thinking about abstractly up to that point. So just do it. That's my advice. And you know, be open-minded about it. Um, don't worry too much about it failing. If it doesn't doesn't work, doesn't work. Try something different. Um, and I think we did that at one point where we just thought the whole thing had essentially kind of consumed itself. And then out of that emerged kind of a much better product. So um, be open-minded, allow it to fail, and then rebuild it into something which might look different, but actually is much more effective than what you started with.